David Krejci stuck it right in the whale. Jack's words. Not mine, but yes, more or less. Welcome into Bruins now. David Krejci did sink the Bruins overtime winner Tuesday night for their fourth win in a row. 17th straight game picking up points, and they did it against a Carolina Hurricanes team that's been steamrolling themselves. More on the Canes or Whalers coming up, but right now let's dive into this bee's hot streak. Krejci scores! The Bruins come from two down! David Krejci finished it off, but it was Jake DeBrusque who stole the puck from Kane's defenseman Justin Folk on the forecheck near the goal line and set up Krejci in the slot. Uh, he took the puck from the guy and then he made a great, uh, great kind of spinorama pass. And, uh, for me, you know, he just put it on my tape and uh, I had a momentum going on the other side. He goalie went on the other way, so uh, JD made it really easy on me. You know, we, we believe in ourselves here. We always have, but... Uh, it's nice to get you know results, and especially this time of year when every point matters. Well, the Bruins are raking in all the points. Their last regulation loss was back on January 19th, and DeBrusque and Krejci have been a huge part of the recent success. Over the last 10 games, the duos combined for 19 points and 12 goals. Nine of those games resulted in Bruins victories. And for Krejci, this is turning into a career year. He's totaled 57 points through 66 games, just 16 points shy of his career high. Yeah, I think they're, they go hand in hand. I mean, Krejci is a driver of that line. That, that's, we know that. Uh, when he's going, it, you know, those other guys are, you know, he'll pull them along. Um, when he's not going, it's tougher for them because he's the guy that controls it in the middle of the ice. Now they can still influence the play with their foot speed here and there, but usually when, you know, that they're in, when they're they're going well, they're going well together. I think it's like Bergie and Marsh, uh, how they've become that way. So now maybe we're seeing the, you know, say now, but we, that birth of that last year, and it's it's really growing this year, especially of late. Did he say they're going whale together? Jake DeBrusque wasn't even a full year old when the Hartford Whalers played their final game in 1997. Well, the Hurricanes paid homage to their roots, sporting the old Whalers unis at TD Garden. And it turns out Connecticut really wants their hockey team back. Fans gathered for a watch party of Tuesday's game in Hartford. As part of the Booster Club, you know, we all brainstorm a lot of the time about how to get the Whaler name out there and keep it alive and show the NHL that we're a city that is deserving of a franchise. I think that we're a very diverse city, that we have many, many cultures, and almost everybody likes hockey. So, I mean, we love hockey here. We love the Whalers when they were here. Things happen, but you know what? Now we're saying, let's re get reinvigorated. Harford is almost a brand new town. There's a lot of development, a lot of people have come into Harford. I mean, we're growing. We're a growing city, and we want to make sure that we bring in another franchise. We have a number of people here. We're excited, and uh, I think it shows uh, that the Whaler brand uh, is still vibrant and will continue to grow. I have friends who are at the game right now. They're saying the arena's packed full of green. Uh, I mean, there, there's a lot, there's a huge statement that's being made tonight. It wasn't all good news for the Bees on Tuesday. Marcus Johansson was hospitalized with an upper body injury after taking a body check from Michael Furland. In other injury related news, Sean Corelli is recovering well from his concussion. He was a full participant at practice on Wednesday and is probable for Thursday's game. Any closer to return? Or? Yeah, yeah, I'm feeling good. Hopefully, uh, hopefully be back for tomorrow. Um, you know, went through yeah. the whole protocol yeah. and everything, and um, just not not rushing it. Just taking it day by day. And, uh, but I feel good. I feel good out there. Took contact. And had a contact practice today, so um, I'm aiming for tomorrow. Meanwhile, no pasta, no problem. The Bruins have been having all this success without David Pasternak, who's been out since early February with that thumb injury. Good news is Pasta's been on the mend and skating with the team, but Bruce Cassidy's not sure what he's going to do with him once he is healthy. If Pasta goes up with Crutch, uh, or sorry, Burry and Marsh, then Dan could go down back with Coyle as well to see if there's, you know what I mean? But it, you don't want to go into the playoffs, and this is, you know, assuming we keep playing well and have a whole bunch of new lines either. So we've, we've got to be careful of it. It is the hand we're dealt with with Pasta. So it, That'll have something to do with it. How much chemistry do they have? Or how much time do they have to develop chemistry? And we're going to have to make a quick decision on that. Another huge part of the Bruins' success has come from between the pipes. On Tuesday, Yaroslav Halak stopped 34 of 37 shots for his fifth win in as many starts. 
Flock hasn't had a regulation loss since January 19th. In his last seven outings, the netminder is 5-0-2. And Tuka Rask can't lose either. He's 14-0-3 since December 29th, including three shutouts. Per NHL stats, Rask is the second goalie in league history to post multiple career point streaks of at least 17 decisions. And uh, perhaps the real reason for the Bruins' dominance? Tori Krug tweeted out this picture of Brad Marchand's angry elf pills for use when feeling angry or inferior to opponent. Ah, uh, well, makes sense now. All right, guys, that's it for this episode of Bruins Now. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next week.